you know, it's been a while since I've talked about some outward, real life situations that have been going on. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to replace today's uh, Let's Play video with that. that. There are a couple other side reasons, but with that being said, hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. I actually, today I actually kind of want to be talk. I want to talk about some recent dreams that I've been having. Um, so I'm the kind of person who, I have enough know-how on the brain at least to where I kind of understand that a lot of dreams that people have are very symbolic and not literal. Sometimes they can be literal, but it's very rare when this happens. Recently, I've applied this knowledge and my cogs, my mental cogs have actually been turning a lot lately because of this. Um, a good example of this is recently there was a dream I had that um, involved now, it took me a moment to process, like, to put together exactly what was going on in this dream. It didn't take too long, but it did take a hot minute after I woke up to put together at least the details of the dream. This is how you can tell usually when a dream is symbolic, by the way, when you can actually remember every detail. It's not like some kind of vision or telling of the future of some kind or a flashback to something that's already happened. When there are certain aspects of this involved, usually that's symbolism, and if you can remember every detail, usually it's not a memory or a foreseeing future event. Usually. Especially in my case. Now with that being said, the current dream I- the, the dream I'm actually talking about involved uh, Norse mythology's goddess Freya as well as Loki and a couple of others. Uh, there were some individuals who I actually know IRL and if I don't know currently, I did know in the past that were kind of partially involved scatteredly but not to any kind of notable degree. Now I'm sure this is just kind of side information. It's something that anybody who has a high interest in the topic of uh, Norse mythology probably already knows this, but for those who don't, Freya and Loki don't see eye to eye. They just don't. Not even, not even close. They've had several issues in the past, far beyond that of Loki and Thor, whether in mythos or if you're thinking of Marvel. Same idea with probably more hectic circumstances in the actual, you know, mythos. But I digress. In said dream, Freya was actually trying to get away from Loki. To the degree where I actually found her hiding behind a... I think it was a silo? I forget the name of it. Something like that. It's a tower of sorts. I don't know. Parts of these face my mind. What was interesting about this dream is that... Freya... was very, very shy at first. Now, the reason I knew it was Freya... is that there are some pictures out there of her that dictate a very specific way she looks. And not from the God of War series, by the way. I'm talking about Freja. If you if you include like if you're talking about the how how to spell it, F R E. For America's purposes, Y J A. Otherwise, F R E J A. Freya, regardless, is how you would say it. Um, it's just spelled that way. But I digress. Um, If you look up different like imagery, there's one variant of it of her that has like kind of a maroonish red hair, more or less. It not really maroon, but it, you can tell it's like a. It looks like somebody dyed their hair red, like a dark red. But 
this depicted it to be a bit more natural than that. That's what this individual looked like. Not to mention, once again, they were talking about Loki. They brought up o the All-Father, Odin, at a point. Um, if I recall correctly, because this happened about four days ago. But it's very notable and it's been on my mind since. I'm not going to go too much into detail about it, but there were some gods and goddesses there that created some kind of mental pattern. And it really got my cogs turning, thinking, what does this mean at this point? I still haven't directly figured it out. And every time I would come close, something would get in the way to contradict it, or I'd forget certain details or something like that would happen. I'd be like, well, great. Now I'm stuck at square one again. And... The only thing that aspect you usually tell me is that it's symbolic and trying to tell me something about reality, but I'm not supposed to know it yet. This is one dream that had happened. What was weird though is this was the first of a line of four different dreams. Last night, the night before, the night before that, and the night that I had that one dream. Now, the second night, the one after that one, when I dreamt, this is where it was weird. Like, this one, I can't really remember. All I remember, I was having a dream just about somebody who I care very dearly about. Whether it's family, or an extremely close friend, or some other individual who I haven't brought up yet, because I've been very discreet about this. I've tried to be, until I have another solidified official relationship. I talk about my family a lot, so it could be them. Once again, I'm not going to say. Uh, but this specific individual um, the, I only remember the dream I was kind of in like a overseeing third person view of things and when I woke up I was sweating and I was scared to the degree where I woke up at like 3.30 in the morning I believe I refused to go back to sleep and I started pondering what had just happened, or at least I tried. Once again, I could not remember, I still do not remember what the dream actually was about. So that one only told me that something with this individual is going to happen in the future. And it could go in several different directions. Now the reason I say this is I have an initial fear of loss or failure. Kind of a mix of both. To the degree where when I try to act on preventing it, I unintentionally cause it. Or at least I, I cause the chain events that lead to it, I should say. And I started thinking on that matter, like, why the two dreams so far? And if there's going to be another one to come, what would it be? Lo and behold, the next night, not last night, but the night before, uh, I actually had a dream that I've actually had before. And I still to this day can't figure out why that particular dream happened. And I'm trying to remember what happened in the aftermath in real life, but the last time I had that dream I'm about to explain, I I was like five or six years old. But the synopsis of the dream is that I'm just chilling, just doing Dave things, and I hear the wall collapse, look over, and I see a bowl booting it towards me. I run in the other direction with the bull following me and, you know, it's chasing. It's just a chase. At first. The thing that made this really weird is that the scenery started to shift. Inception style. Or, if you haven't seen Inception, then how about Doctor Strange style. And 
I recall that I would just like casually if the wall was like, if it was like floor to a wall, I would just casually run up the wall as if it was just another layer of gravity. The bowl followed me. And it ended up just being kind of a smiley circle. I woke up midway and I was like, well that was weird. I haven't had that dream in what, twenty five years? <laughs> It's weird how I remember that one, though. And then they came last night. Last night's dream was very... all over the place. And this is kind of where the final nail in the coffin that made me really confused, like, watching all this Gravity Falls stuff going on recently. About that level of confusing, unless you're a diehard theorist. But... With all that said, last night's dream... <sighs> so in the process of the fears that I brought up earlier, the fear of loss and the fear of failure has one triangular end to that fear. Loss, failure, and the fear of being alone. I've been thinking of this triad of fears a lot recently, which might be part of the reason why these dreams have been happening. But if that's the case, I don't know what these dreams are trying to tell me yet. It's something I kind of would want to figure out on my own. If I can. But this last dream makes it all the more confusing for one reason. The dream I had last night... I don't know if it was a memory or not, but it was a dream about something that I had claimed was a dream to someone who at the time, this was eight years ago, by the way. Eight years ago I had this dream and it was, I, it, it, I, it was about someone, or at least this is how I interpreted it at the time, who was extremely close to me, like, on an almost boyfriend-girlfriend level. Bear in mind, once again, this was eight years ago. This was long before I even got married. To my ex-wife, Pink Fox. Um, in fact, I don't even think I, yeah, I, I didn't even come close to even knowing her yet. So I was still pretty flexible at the time. Well, there was still one specific individual at that point in time who I was mentally ex and in verbal senses extremely close to. And that was my high school best friend, Becca. I remember telling her about this dream that I had uh, where, okay, realistically what the dream actually was, it was me on one knee talking to, I believe it was like a 12 year old boy with a woman who, whether it was one person or another, I still can't identify it, in the background smiling at that uh, scene of me talking to the boy holding a baby well, the woman in the background is holding the baby in reality that was just a daydream something that kind of just popped into my head out of the blue like, I wasn't thinking about it it just showed up that was eight years ago but what's weird about it is the same dream actually reappeared, but as an actual dream this time. Like last time, there was no definitive answer to who the person was. But... At this point in time in my life, I can't really say because I, the, the way I see it, I have had, like I said, that fear of being alone. 
The only way I can really interpret that dream right now is just kind of reassurance that that's not going to happen. But being an introvert, unless you can get me talking for long enough, if you can get me talking for at all, it makes it very hard for me to just go, oh yeah, I think I, 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 you know, I'm going to get to that point, blah blah blah. I mean, duh, duh I am, but because of that introversy, it's not easy. That triad of fears pretty much caused it a planting into my head that looking without, like, just scatteredly looking around blindly just won't work. I had that in my head originally, and recently that's been proven correct. So, as much as I was originally interpreting that most recent dream as saying that, I can't help but shake the feeling it actually does mean something more. Especially when you tie all four dreams together. The one about Freya trying to get away from Loki. Uh, the one about the bull. The one about the unknown woman and the boy and the one about someone currently close and has been for forever for obvious reasons if I actually said who but um, again confidentiality but A dream about this individual and I can't remember anything from it. Just the combination of those four things makes me wonder what am I trying is, is someone or something trying to tell me something? The dreamscape has always been an interesting place for me. And I will admit I got the term dreamscape from Gravity Falls the Disney XD show. That has reignited interest in a lot of communities. That, but the more I use the phrase, the more I actually grew comfortable with referring to what's going on in here when you're asleep as the dreamscape. For obvious reasons. It's an escape to your dream world. Dreamscape. So, I can't help but think that something or someone is trying to use my dreamscape to tell me something or to guide me but even for that to happen I'd have to actually know what's trying to be said in the first place luckily this is why I'm glad I have an interest in dreams but, even with that, I am still stumped. I don't know. This is just kind of something I wanted to discuss, just because it kind of came to my mind. And I, I, I feel, I've been feeling very restless because of this. I hope this doesn't continue admittedly, because... Albeit, outside of what younger Jacksepticeye or a much, much, much older individual actually originally came up with said phrase. Sleep is not for the weak. I actually do need it. Who am I kidding that? Yeah, sleep is for the weak. I'm weak. I'm just kidding. Anyway, yeah. I kind of wanted to talk about this just because I felt... I don't know, maybe it'll help, maybe it won't. Um, I don't know, if any of you out there, after listening to these dreams, has some idea of what it might be let me know in the comments below i'm actually interested to hear these theories about it or maybe if you're a dream therapist and you know off the bat hey love to hear about that too this is actually a topic that i kind of have had a high interest in learning about in the first place anyway so maybe it'll teach me something anyway thank you guys so much for watching this uh, little video and sticking around for the 20 minutes that i kind of vented about this uh, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure to give the video a like, and maybe I can start doing these a bit more often. I did it, admittedly, one of the reasons I did this one today is because 
I actually have a lot of practice to work with when it comes to Pac-Man World 2, which would have been today, but I'm not ready for it. And I know it. I want to take the time to prep properly, so. That isn't the main reason I did this video, because I was going to do this video anyway, but that's why I'm doing it today, specifically. Anyway, that being said, thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all later. See you guys.